Hey, what's going on in the G-verse? You know, I was having a very interesting conversation with a client today about motivation. And she said, you know, I just feel more, and I feel so productive today because the day is sunny. It's warm outside and, you know, I want to go outside and it's kind of calling me because it's distracting me from my work. Well, me being the good consultant that I am, <laughs> I had to lash into her. I had to say, look, your motivation should not be dependent upon if it's sunny outside or not. And many people are, because you'll see all types of behavior because it's about to be spring. You'll see people in their shorts, sitting outside, talking, because it's sunny. I have learned to find joy on any day. Actually, strange as it sounds, I enjoy rainy days. I love rainy days. To me, they're just wonderful. When we had the snow apocalypse, I thought that was cool too. When we had, you know, other if it's not a tornado or a hurricane, it's awesome for me. I like winter. I am a very hot natured person, which means I sweat profusely when I get a little warm. So I love the winter. Essentially, you have to condition yourself to be internally motivated, not externally driven. That's why people who chase money for the sake of chasing money often fail. It's not the pursuit that has a lot of power behind it because once you get a little money, then you get comfortable. Then once you get comfortable, then you slack off. Once you slack off, the results stop. Next thing you know, you're back where you were because you're externally driven. And we were talking and went on and then, you know, she got a little huffy, a little huffy. She's like, well, you know, it's, just, it's like, okay, do you want to be different than other people or do you want to be like everyone else? Because everyone else is all goodly, good, godly. It's all oh man, it's the summer. Whoa, it's spring. I can go lay on the beach and do nothing. If you get your life, your financial life, where you want to be, any month of the year, you would have the income to take your ass to a tropical location and let your toes dig into the sand. You will not have to wait until summer. You can go to summer or you can bring summer to you. That is the power of a life of intent and design. As long as you're waiting for external motivation, as long as you're waiting for things to be just right, just so, just the bow tied perfectly on the present of life, you are going to be a miserable little puppy. You're going to be a little puppy in the corner whining and pissing on yourself because life is just keep, it keeps throwing you. So I, once again, sometimes when I dig into my clients, I, I just have this feeling that, you know, I'm about to lose a client, but you know what? I rather lose a client and serve them well be it temporarily than to blow smoke up their ass because like I said she got huffy and we started talking and she got mad then I was like what are your daily goals are you doing the power of six what are you doing what are you doing I'm just like the drill sergeant like hut one hut two and it kept going on and we reached a breakthrough we reached a point where I found out, and this is why I love doing consults, because I find so much out about my clients that I won't get in an email, that I won't get, you know, that one-on-one -on -one exchange is just so important. It is incredibly crucial for me to be a positive resource for my clients. And we got to a breakthrough, and we, I found something out about her, and the next 30 minutes, we came to a solution, and that was, you know, early this morning, and she's already made money from that solution and she's forgotten about going outside and hanging out in the sun. That is the power of internal motivation. That is the power of being in charge of your emotional state. Because look, play is required. Hear me out. Taking time off is required. It is required, it is necessary. You cannot work seven days a week you know, 20 hours a day without grinding yourself down to nothing. It's just not going to happen. You need to recharge yourself. You need to actually 
take care of yourself. These are things that are very, very important to your mental, physical, and spiritual well-being. You have to do this stuff. But being so externally driven that every time the sun comes out, you want to run. I want you to think about it. Today is the day that you can go on your calendar and say in the next 90 days, I am going to create myself a sunny day fun. Never, ever create a rainy day fun. Don't even use those words in your financial life. Create a sunny day fun. Create a lifestyle fund. That's F-U-N-D for all the folks who make fun of the way that I speak. I know I say things incorrectly all the time, but hey, it's life. Create a sunny day fund. 90 days, you're going to put $1,500, $2,000 in an account, preferably a money market account. And the next time you have the urge to go dig your toes into the sand, go online, get yourself a deal with Priceline.com, Hotwire, whatever, and take your ass to the beach because you want to go, because you can go, because you prepared to go before the urge hits you. Do you understand with the way that the things are set up today that you can create a lifestyle that you're at the beach 12 months out of the year? I'm going to break it down for you. I'm going to break it down for you so you will understand how this thing will jump off for you. You create yourself an internet business. The level of internet business, there's, I mean, it could be eBay, it could be Amazon, it could be it's the, it could be whatever, it could be YouTube. You create this business. Then what you do is you carve out a lifestyle. Because this is the thing that I had to learn. I thought I was a free person when I was in the storage auction business. I was partially free because I controlled my life, which is big. It's very, very big. It's very, very important. I, I control my life. But I was actually trapped to a degree because I couldn't really go anywhere without setting up certain things. Like, you know, this is like going to take a trip or something, sell a bunch of stuff on Craigslist, overlist on eBay, do all this stuff, have big sales so I have a chunk of money and go and not come back and be broke. Well, with today's businesses, you can go on that vacation and still make the same money that you are making when you're at home. If you set it up correctly, you can do that. You can enjoy the benefits of internet freedom, internet lifestyle, make money, and be on the beach 12 months out the year. Which means, hey, you know, it's like, okay, well, this month I'm going to Florida. This month I'm going to the Bahamas. This month I'm going, and if you understand, when it's winter here, it's summer in many other parts of the world. You know, just a tip for you sellers is like, I can't sell winter stuff during the summer. Well, if you're an international seller, yes, you can. So you can set that up now. You can set that up where you are going to have the ability to be on the beach four, five, six, or 12 times a year if you want. You don't have to wait until the sun comes. You can make the sun. You know, like that, that expression, making it rain? You can make it sun. You can make it sun. Set up your sunny day fun. Let me explain that a little further and go into more detail. The deal is you have to plan this stuff in advance. You have to plan it in advance and you have to actually see yourself being able to do this now the sunny day fund is and this is part of the hustler mindset project mindset when you say I'm gonna create myself a rainy day fund what you're doing is you're putting together a chunk of money that whenever you think it's gonna rain that the, you that money's just there for a rain pain bad stuff is now having a life fund which is money for your life is totally different how the words that you use, how you use them, the tense, the emotion, and all that stuff behind the words is very, very important. It's extremely crucial. So take that whole thing, rainy day fund out, and sunny day. So sunny day fund is a fund for opportunity. It's not for a cataclysmic event. It's not for something crazy. 
do you know that most personal emergencies can be covered for two thousand dollars or less you gotta go out of town buy a plane ticket something happens car breakdown two thousand dollars covers 90 percent of the shit that could just occur in your life so if you got two thousand dollars cash somewhere and i did this in a video a long time ago go ahead and create a savings account so next time something happens you won't have to dig into your current money and you'll be amazed but it's it's a mindset it is a mindset going back to my client we, we talked about a lot of stuff because many people are externally driven they dress for other people they date people that they think other people would approve of they live in the house they think other people approve of there's a group of people who essentially don't give a fuck what you think about them and they live their life on their terms and categorically they're more happy because they're living the way that they want to live, not the way that they think they should live. There's a big difference in how that is broken down. And many people miss that lesson. Well, how do you become internally motivated? That is the $50,000 question. How do you get to that point where you are internally motivated? Where what you're doing, how you're doing it, um, how do you get that wellspring of motivation that when you wake up out the bed, you sit down and start doing the things that you need to do to be successful in your life without someone kicking your ass, without someone poking you saying, get your ass up. The day is, daylight's burning, baby. Get your ass up. Where, where do you get that from? My journey on that was completely falling on my face I mean literally for a few years I was a bum I was uh, just ass out in so many ways always really emotionally, spiritually, physically where I lived everything was fucked up everything and it went on for a protracted period of time so I run on fear <laughs> my internal motivation is fear fear of living that kind of life again. I know what it's like to be hungry. I know what it's like to be freezing in the middle of the night. I know what that shit feels like. I know what it's like to work all day, get calluses on your hands, and someone gives you 30 or $40 for all of that work. I know what that shit feels like, and it doesn't feel good. That is my, I was like, okay, dude, I wake up in the morning, you know, and I have those lazy, do nothing days like everyone else, and it's like, okay, do you remember that day that you were out there in the landfill picking diapers out of the landfill to comply with EPA regulations in a smelly landfill in these boots that hurt your feet because they were the size too big? You remember that? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Next thing you know, my feet are on the floor. I am in front of my computer. I am thinking concepts, ideas, I'm doing research. That is my internal motivation because I know what's on the other side. I know what will happen if I just take for granted the beautiful life that I have. I know what's out there. Sometimes you have to fall to get up. There are many people who are extremely fortunate that go on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, any type of social media, you can find these people every day of the week who will bitch and whine about how miserable their privileged life is because their perspective is about as deep as a penny. It's about as deep as a penny is on laying down on the ground. That's how deep their perspective is. My perspective is like freaking Grand Canyon size because there are so many things in this world that people don't know about, never experienced. And typically a person is only going to be impacted and concerned about things that reside or touch their sphere of influence or the sphere of their life. That's the only thing they care about. That's why, you know, when people are like, there's a race war. I'm like, most white people get up in the morning and the first thing they think about is, what am I going to eat? Now I'm going to keep these black people down. That's the first thing in most white people. And the second thing is, shit, I got to go to work. The third thing is, did I get gas? Fourth thing is, is there food for the kids? Oh, shit, I got No one is sitting around going, hmm, how can I hold this group of people back? Black people are not thinking about taking out white people. 
And like, shit, how can I survive? That is the number one thing that most people are thinking about. How can I survive? How can I get some food? How can I have some shelter? How can I get something? To, I mean, basic needs. That's what people are thinking about. Hey, can I go take a trip? So on and so forth. That's the deal. That's what people are thinking about. And that cracks me up when I see all of these people who are so predicated on race that that's all they talk about. I have friends on Facebook and I keep there to remind me of how negative that thinking can be. It's just like, hey, you know, there's white people, there's black people. The reality is if you are an American citizen, you are more fortunate than 85 to 90% of the people in the rest of the world. Even if you are poor in the fucking hood, got to duck bullets to get your ass home. Because there are some people, they've got to duck suicide bombers. They've got to duck bad water. They have to duck mosquitoes that are carrying uh, malaria. And to, you know, they have to duck tuberculosis. They have to, <laughs> there's so many things that they have to duck before 9 a.m. that are life threatening that we don't even have to worry about. I mean, when's the last time you went to the mall and you worried about someone showing up with a bomb strapped to their chest? It's happened here a few times in some parts of the world. That is a daily occurrence. That you're going to get some ice cream and you lose your leg. You're going to get some ice cream, you lose mom and dad. You're going to get some ice cream, you lose everybody. And you're in the hospital wondering how come you weren't gone. This is the reality that people are dealing with. And that's why when I, I look at people... And some people think I'm incredibly harsh. I think I'm incredibly real. I know. I mean, there's some of that stuff that is going on here in the United States because there are um, so many people who are just on the precipice of losing their mind due to self-induced trauma. Not external, self-induced trauma. The way that they think. The way this, this whole... All your problems, believe it or not, are internally... They originate internally. And they're going, no, 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 no. Unless you get hit by a car while you're walking the street. Or you're struck by some disease. Or a flying saucer comes from Saturn and takes your head off. Okay, those are events that impact you that you had nothing to do with. You weren't prepared. You got got. But the other 95% of your life... It's on you. It is on you. How you deal with people. How people deal with you. How the world is, is uh, looking at you. How you're going to do certain things. That's all on you. But so many people want to push that responsibility off on someone else. Like I'm mad because you made me mad. I mean, it, it is a choice. It is a choice. And when I say internally, and that's where I had to start when I was a bum, I make no qualms about it. I made some bad decisions that resulted in calamity in my life. And when I took ownership of those decisions and when I started to push forth, when I started to work harder than I ever worked before, oh, gee, my, oh, oh my God, oh, my God, I was starting to be successful. I mean, it was weird how that worked. It's like, okay, you make better decisions, you work hard, you have a strategy, you have a plan, and you hit it every day. All of a sudden, good things start to happen. I mean, it's incredible how that works out. So many people don't want to hear that. It's like, well, you need a secret recipe. 2009, I started Conundrum Publishing in the uh, height of a recession. I started selling a book, an e-book, a book, and I'll take ownership. In the beginning, that first edition wasn't that good in terms of the editing, typos and stuff. Hey, it is what it is. And that book made me a livable income in the middle of a recession. And then when the TV shows came on and everyone learned about whoo, storage auctions, then that book started, I started making in a week what most people make in a month from one book. Now, some people would go, Glendon, you were lucky. And if I was in front of you, I would bitch slap you because luck did not sit down in that basement and bang out those words. Luck did not create the videos. Luck did not say, hey, you fucked up. You need to refund people their money and put out a better version of the book. Luck did not write the second book. Luck did not write the third book. Luck didn't write the fourth book. Luck didn't write the fucking fifth book. It was work and effort and application that did that. I quote unquote got lucky because I worked my ass off. 
I got an opportunity to be in the pilot of a reality show. After the show got uh, shot down, I got a very lucrative consulting opportunity. All of that came because I sat down and I worked. And the thing is, you can do the same thing. This is the biggest problem I see with most people. A lack of delayed gratification. And that's it. It's not how smart you are. It's not how much money you have. It's none of that stuff. It's the fact that you cannot work really hard for a protracted period of time without getting a fucking cookie. Now look, okay, I worked eight hours. Where's my cookie? I worked a week. Where are my two cookies? No, no, fuck that. Where's my six pack of cookies? I must work and therefore I want a cookie and a doggy treat and a Scooby snack because I actually got my ass up and did something for a week. Ooh, ooh, you're so special. And that's the problem. You're not special. You're typical. And as long as you have typical thought, you're going to have a typical life. This isn't me beating you up. This isn't me saying that you're an asshole. This is me saying that you are operating on a false set of principles that will hold you back for the rest of your life. That's what I'm saying. I am saying that you will not be the great person that you are capable of being until you started thinking like a great person. You cannot be royalty if you are acting like a peasant. We love those stories of the prince that was among the people or the king who didn't know he was a king. He had royal blood or she was a queen and she had royal blood and she was amongst the people. The fact of the matter is most people who are kings and queens, royalty, exhibit it pretty damn early. And you want to be a king of your life or the queen of your life? and have your the domain and your minions and your subjects, you gotta act like a fucking king. You have to act like a fucking queen. And kings and queens do not act like typical people. Therefore, they're kings and queens. What you act like is what you are. So, going with that, many, many people have the dreams of champagne. They have the dreams of trips they have the dreams of this luxurious lifestyle, but they have the mindset of a person in poverty. Going back to what I said about being internally driven, everything starts internally. Everything starts internally. And as long as you continue to have poverty mindset, a peasant mindset, a mindset of mediocrity, a mindset of shit, you know, if I try, I'm just going to fail anyway. Therefore, I shouldn't even try. I should just sit here and continue to commiserate with my broke ass friends about how those nasty, evil, rich people are fucking me while I sit on my ass. Yep. That's what people do. That's what people do. When you start to exhibit concrete thought, independent thought, you start to flesh out a lot of the falsehoods that you're taught as a kid you start to see the world totally differently when you really think about your life from a point of does this make sense when you start to regurgitate the fairy tales you were told as a kid like oh you're a great person or the biggest lie follow your passion and the money will come if your passion is making uh, computers possibly if your passion is making great movies possibly if your passion is making great music possibly if your passion is collecting straws no if your passion is sitting at home thinking that you're a manager and you do nothing with your life no if your passion is you know I'm, I'm about building those businesses yo you know I'm about you know being a CEO and you've not put together one organization in your life you've not built one business and you have not applied yourself for more than three months to any single endeavor uh, no your passion is not gonna pay you no your passion is not gonna put any money in your pocket no your passion is gonna leave you broke and despondent because the reality is many people don't have a passion they have hobbies and pleasurable pursuits they don't have anything that wakes them up in the middle of the night and they say oh this line would be great in the novel and they wake up and they write on a sheet of paper and they take their ass back to sleep that my friend is fucking passion they don't have the kind of passion that says you know just because it hasn't been done i'm gonna do it and devote 10 years of their life trying to make sure it happens that's fucking passion and many people don't have it so that's all my little rant and rave on being internally driven you know forget sunny days 
create your own sunny days, be in charge of your life and build things that will enhance and enrich you. That's what you're capable of. You have all of those abilities. It's there in you. You just got to fucking work. It's there. All right. This is Glendon and I'll see you on the good side.